Denver, Outshine Film Festival's Fort Lauderdale Virtual Edition, featuring queer films from all over the world. Presenting 18 feature films and three shorts programs, plus a drive-in movie night at Pier 66. Watch the best LGBTQ plus films from home. Tickets are on sale now. Check out the program at outshinefilm.com. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Victor Jimenez. I'm the executive director of the Outshine LGBTQ Plus Film Festival. And on behalf of the board, the staff, and our presenting sponsors, um, Gilead and Broward County, welcome to the virtual Q&A for Down River. Uh, first, I'm going to bring into the room the writer and director of the film, Grant Shigula. Um, Grant, I messed up your name. What is it again? I'm sorry. <laughs> Shikluna. But uh, you know what? I've been called way worse. So uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> nice to be here. Thanks for having me. No, um, thank you for being here. And then also we have lead actor Reef Ireland. Hey, you got it right. <laughs> yeah. You're your name after a whole country, so it kind of works out well, <laughs> well for me. <Yeah. laughs> so one thing I want to let the audience kind of know that actually um, Down the River has two outshine records that probably people aren't aware of. The first one, actually, it's, it's the most presented film <laughs> in the history of the festival. It was uh, here in 2015 for both the Miami edition in April and the Fort Lauderdale edition in October. And then also now it's obviously here for this virtual edition that we're doing in December. So, yeah, three times we've had Down River. The wow. other the other thing that uh, this film sets a record for, it's the farthest distance traveled by the filmmaker and talent to ever get to the film festival since Grant and Reef came all the way here from Australia and they were physically here for the festival in 2015. Uh, wow. And that was <laughs> thanks to the American <laughs> Australian Association who uh, sponsored you guys' flight. So I wanna, yeah. even though five years, you know, not late because I thanked them back then, but I'm gonna thank them again because it was actually great having you guys here. Yeah. Um, and then, hey, welcome here. Thanks. So, so you know, out of curiosity, um, you know, I, I had to rewatch the film. It's it's been a, been a while, and then also just kind of looking up you you guys. Um, you two previously worked together on the short film The Wilding, which also had Reef as the lead in Jail. Was this a coincidence, uh, or is this the only way you two can work together? Is that Reef has to play a, a character that's in jail, and uh, and that's how he starts off? <laughs> yeah, I refuse to work with any other actor. Um, if it's unless it's Reef playing the same character, um, no. The way the Wilding came about was um, I had been working on the script for Down River earlier, and um, you know for a number of years really. And then um, we had this uh, sort of attitude in Australia about making short films as being a calling card for the feature, and so then I, I wrote the storyline for the Wilding. Um, with that in mind, that if we were able to get it made, that, uh, you know, we could be sort of presented uh, as a, a kind of prequel. And really, in a way, you can watch you can watch The Wilding as a total prequel to Down River. It's, it's entirely set in the juvenile de detention centre. Um, Reef's character has a different name, but ostensibly it's the same character. Uh, and, yeah, it's a wonderful little film. And, you know, it's I think it's the best short film that I made. Um, and I had such a great experience on it and especially working with Reef. And so when it came to the point where we were able to make Down River and thinking about casting, it was just always in my mind that it's got to be Reef, it's got to be Reef. And, um, yeah, and, 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 and one thing really led to the other. So, uh, yeah, if you can try to track down The Wilding, you know, it's, I think it's a really wonderful little film. I'm really proud of it. And you kind of started, you, you kind of led into my, my, my next question perfectly, which is, um, is like, where did the idea for Down River actually come from? I mean, now you, you basically explained the wilding kind of was like almost a precursor to it, but like, where did, where did the idea for Down River actually come from? Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in dark material and dark, dark stories. And um, I was really, I was in, in inspired by a number of, um, true cases and especially around young young people that have committed murders or, um, you know, horrific crimes when they're younger and asking questions of whether that should define them for the rest of their life or whether they have a, a chance to uh, make amends. 
And so that's that kind of premise was really what I what kick started um, Downriver. And you know, my my film interests have always been around um, you know gothic uh, gothic kind of films like Southern Gothic uh, from America or you know Australian Gothic films or Victorian Gothic ghost stories. Like those are the that's that's the film sort of you know catalog that I, that I grew up on. Uh, and so you put that sort of dark interest in that sort of material with um, with that sort of film um, inspiration and then somehow what comes out of it is downriver. As I said, I worked on it for years and years, so the story really changed a lot. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we, 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 we settled on the, the story of, of downriver, which is a really interesting detective story from my point of view where the detective is uh, sort of uncovering his own crime. Uh, and I was really sort of proud of sort of you know that little that strange spin on on a, on the detective story. Then you know, Reef, um, kind of that the answer kind of leads into my next question. At, at least to me, uh, this seems to be like a very difficult role to play. You know, James is re reserved; he's an intense character, and most of the acting that you did is basically you know it's it's in the eyes. Was it difficult? Was it a difficult role to play? And how did you develop the character? Um. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, it was. I mean, he's it's, it's, it's a pretty full-on um, character to play because uh, because of how many levels and layers he has. Um, you know, ultimately, it's a story of, um, yeah, it's a detective story. He's uncovering his own crime, but also uh, it's a story of forgiveness as well. You know, watching the film again recently, I've realised that the film really does start with that with that first scene where the, the mother visits him and it's, you know, he... It, it really drives the whole film. It's like the, the beat starts there and he's trying to forgive himself, get forgiveness from everyone to, to sort of, to sort of lay it all bare and, and leave it all behind him. But um, yeah, I, I remember preparing for the role. Um, obviously, you know, the character spent majority of his life in um, detention. So uh, yeah, a lot of social, I remember I socially distanced before it was cool um, for about, um, a few weeks leading into it and just really spent my time with the script and Grant was great because the amount of freedom and any ideas that I had uh, that I felt about the character, he was really open to running with my ideas that I had as well. And um, yeah, it, it, it was, it's, it's strange. There's so many layers to it. And I think watching it again, I, I mean, I can't really remember what I was thinking, but there's so much to James that I think even now I'm still sort of, um, sort of rediscovering and sort of realizing that, um, yeah, there's 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 so many layers there that uh, that I was able to, to to tap into. So, yeah. Speaking of the opening scene, I was just kind of you know curious about it. It was you know uh, you know the the confrontation with the the, the dead boy's mother and and um, and James's care you know James in 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 jail is I, I is that a thing? Like, does that actually happen in Australia? <laughs> like, or is that like a totally fictitious thing to just to get the story going? It was more curiosity part on my part. Uh, I remember researching this at the time, and uh, it 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 would have been possible. Um, it would have had to go through so many layers of permission um, for for her to have that conversation, and ultimately he would have had to agree to have the conversation. But she could she could put in a request, um, and it could have been scuttled at any point. But I mean, there must have been uh, the right people around that to allow that to happen. Um, and she's probably been told that she needs to um, be calm and she, she begins the scene in that way and then she unravels. And, uh, and I think that that's, you know, that's how I approach that scene is that you can see that she's really trying to um, just appeal to him uh, just, just with words and, and questions and then she just starts to unravel, which is just pure human nature. Yeah. Sp speaking of scenes and actually, Probably my favorite scene in the movie didn't actually have to do with the whole the mystery aspect, but but you alluded to it also, which was more like the uh, like you know forgiveness aspect, which was a scene of James and then um, his mom's uh, boyfriend conversation. Oh, you know, you know, I had my I forgot it was my brother, my cousin. He was in jail, and then he came out, and then he gave this like you know really great advice. And I just, you know, it just touched me because, you know, they, they, you know, once you serve your time, you know, how do you get over the stigma that you kind of have? And they kind of that, that was a nice conversation to 
to have there and, and, and bring that point out there. What what was what were, what were, what were each of you's, your favorite scene, like creatively, like to actually produce and see, like Reef, what, what was your favorite scene in the whole movie? Ah, I, I have two. One, one is the first scene. The first scene, every time I watch it, it's so haunting um, for me. And I remember even doing it, being confronted by the mother of the victim is, it's so haunting and it sets the tone for the whole film. And I think it's so well done and I'm so proud of it. Every time I watch it, um, it's so engaging. The other is, um, it's my favorite more so when we filmed it was the discovery of the bodies. Um, because you know, it is a detective story that was kind of, I don't know how to put it. It was the, you know, it was the, 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 the climax of it all actually finding, finding them. Um, and I remember filming it, uh, I asked Grant if I could not know where they had been placed. Um, and, um, so the, the camera would just follow me around and, and I was actually trying to find them. So that is my, and, and another real favorite of mine, just because of, uh, I, I do remember that that was quite almost real. It felt very real. So, um, as an actor, I... oh, Sorry, sorry. We lost you for a second, Reef. Oh, no, oh, I was really good. What I said was so good. It was so <laughs> As an actor. Um, yeah, sorry. Where, where, where did you lose me? Uh, you said as an actor. Oh, yeah, yeah. So as an actor, being able to, yeah, sink my teeth into that scene and, and it be almost as real for me as it was for the character, as it was for everyone on set that day was was amazing. The, so, yeah. Yeah, that was one of the last things that we filmed um, was was the scene that Reese talking about there. And, um, you know, we were very low budget, but we we really put resources and time into the creation of those of those bodies. And um, and even I hadn't I'd seen sort of work in progress shots, but then they were still being built while, while we were shooting. And I remember the day that they arrived on set in, in the back of a car and it was just the most eerie feeling because we'd been talking about these kids and shooting scenes about these kids and unravelling this mystery and this was our last day of shoot um, or second last day. And um, <clears throat> the, the great artists, Sharp FX, who created these bodies, invited me over to have a look at the finished product and just opened up the back of the car and sort of almost like a body bag un 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 unravelled and it was just the most visceral reaction um, as a filmmaker that you created this um, really um, big world and 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 big um, and horrific story to to come face to face with the, with those two children. So I can only imagine from Reese's point of view, um, having not seen what the what the kids would look like, and then wading around in the water and trying to to find you know a, a, a mass under there, and then lifting lifting the boy up for the first time would be pretty, pretty confronting. For me, um, I love that scene. I, that was an amazing day on set. And then um, also there's uh, the great scene between Kerry Fox and Reef, where he is confessing to her. And um, I love that just by the, the, the pure beauty of watching how subtle and beautiful Reef is as an actor. Um, block your ears here, Reef. Um, but that was just the, the most uh, wonderful scene to shoot. We didn't have very much time at all. We'd had very little time to do any scene. Um, and I remember that was the end of the day and we had this curfew because we were shooting at night at, in a real caravan park and they said, you have to be out by 9.30 every night. So we like the sun would set and we'd have maybe an hour to do all these night scenes. And that was one of them. And I thought this is such an emotional scene and um, I don't know if we'll be able to, um, successfully do this and then you know you just you 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 give give the uh the impulse to someone like reef and he just brings it and it's the most uh beautiful uh push in and i always think how does he do that give that such a subtle performance and that beautiful um letting go of emotion and quite literally the lens of the camera if you remember reef the lens of the camera is yeah, here yeah yeah that's how close I mean, that, yeah it, it sort of pushes in pushes in pushes in and it ends up at the end of the scene here how you can do that with a <laughs> lens of a camera there i just think is magic the, the one of the other you know themes i kind of picked up on the movie is um people in this you know people in general not being able to escape just 
bad situation or just keep it, you know, keep on going back to uh, uh, a bad situation. Like, for example, like, like, like let's say Anth the character of Anthony and everybody or just Anthony's family. Like everyone seems to be stuck in this vicious um, like circle that they came, you know, they willingly don't want to get out of. Um, was that something that was always there in the story? Like, you know, the, like these people could just cannot escape the circle that they were in. Yeah, look, that sort of goes back to imprisonment in a way, um, which were themes that had kind of permeated like those early short films. So not just The Wilding and, and Down River, but other films. I did another film about um, this beautiful girl who'd been burned in a fire in a tragic accident and woke up and she was burnt and wrapped in bandages and in bed and not sure of what had happened to her. And that's films called Golden Girl. And, you know, to a degree, when I look at that film, The Wilding, Down River, even the others, there is this sort of um, this, this uh, theme of imprisonment coming through. Now, I'm, I'm not sure what that's about. Um, and I don't feel trapped in my own life. But, you know, it certainly was something I think I was interested in. Perhaps it goes back to, you know, childhood and where I grew up. I grew up in this really rural town um, and I was very imaginative and my eyes were always outside uh, and looking out and watching films and imagining just one day I'll be able to get to Sydney and then oh, one day I'll be able to, you know, leave Australia. And so perhaps it's perhaps it does come from that feeling of being young, really isolated and just wanting to break through. So, yeah, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's certainly something which has been in right across all those films. So, pretty cool. The uh, question is actually for both of you, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start with Re first. Like, you know, looking back on it, you know, five years from now, like, would, it, would there have been anything that you changed about your performance? Like, if, you know, you, if you, you watched it again and you're like, oh, I wish I'd done this differently, <laughs> or? No, no, it really was, when I, wa I watched it quite recently, um, and I just remember it was a time and place, you know, like if I was to do it again now, sure, like it would, it would be different. It would be very different just because of, um, who I am and, 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 you know, life. I mean, as an actor, you do, you bring, even if it's just the smallest amount, um, of yourself to the role. So it, it would have changed. I, I don't know how it would have changed. I'd have to see it, but it, it would have changed. Would I have changed anything? No, 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 no. I, I felt really happy with it, um, my performance, um, and and just the whole, um, what's the word, the whole way it was shot, you know, Grant really cared so much about this story and, you know, the story of forgiveness and redemption and this kid break, you know, talk, uh, talking back about what you were saying before, but breaking the cycle, not not becoming um, this criminal who's just going to reoffend or, or do anything like that, he, you know, it's, it's a, he wants a fresh slate um and i think that um yeah watching it back now that was a, a real time and place and how that felt to me i think i was 21 when i made it i'm 20 or 22 so i'm 27 now so it would just be a different it'd be a different feeling to me and i think that would come out in my performance so no i wouldn't change anything definitely not no how about you grant would you have changed anything in the way you, you made the film look i i really agree with reef um I, I don't think so. I mean, of course, when you look back over it, you think, oh, maybe I would have approached that slightly differently. But on the whole, considering, you know, what we were up against and, and the ambition of what we were trying to achieve, um, I'm really thrilled with the film and, and how it's come, come out. I mean, we had such a small team and such a small pool of money and you know, I really feel like with Reese's performance and the way we shot it, we made a, a big screen experience from a really sort of small pool of resources. Um, and so I'm really proud of it. I think that there are some some script things I would have um, would have liked to have been able to fix. Uh, you know, there was a kind of subplot that ended up not going anywhere in the film and we it, it did go somewhere in the script, but... Uh, we ended up cutting it out for um, reasons of length, uh, as often happens with subplots. And so there are these kind of non sequiturs, kind of like little hints of, of that subplot 
which some people do latch onto and go, what was that about? And where is it? And, I, you know, it's that sort of smoothing out if I'd had more time or, you know, um, perhaps some more experience at the time, I, I would have smoothed that out in advance of the shoot, I think. But um, on on the whole, you know, I'm really proud of it. It's first film for Reef as a lead role, first film for me as a director, and you know, we just didn't compromise. We were like, this this is the film we set out to make. So um, it is of its time. I completely agree. Yeah. No, and 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 it was an incredible film. As I said in the beginning, when we got kind of got started, you guys actually, you know, you you flew up from Australia all the way to Miami. And um, I think you guys had a good time here. You know, this was, you know, <laughs> in the step and repeat. And I think this night you guys uh, went to one of our parties and, and can you tell me what's exactly going on here? Do you remember this? <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was like a shoe, was it? Was it, oh, right. yeah, it was a high heel party, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Move yeah, and it was like yeah. a you know a fierce sort of cash and um, catwalk sort of fashion parade, um, and we were judging. I mean, we were judging the whole package, but you know the shoes yeah. and and the and the attitude yeah. and a walk yeah. and yeah. So I mean, that was look. I hardly remember it because there were a lot of cocktails prior to. <laughs> now I, I now that kind of it's a good lead into my next question, which is to reef is. I know you know you got this, but did you remember when this was actually happening, when you got your brand new tattoo down here in Miami? I, I did remember, I, yes, yes. Me and Grant, um, yeah, we, that, was a, that, was a real, that was a real time. Miami was a real time. I have no regret. That's my favorite tattoo, actually, of all my tattoos. That's um, still my favorite. Um, but I have a, a, a rule that I've made with myself where I get a tattoo in every country that I travel to, and that's my American tattoo. And I'm very happy with it, and I love it. And it, every time I look at it, it reminds me of the great time that I had in Miami, and end of the film as well, actually, because Grant was right there when I was getting the tattoo done. We went to a few artists, and yeah, it was it was awesome. And it's yep, yeah, I look back on that tattoo very fondly. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear it because at the time I was like, you know, I I feel even though I didn't, look, I'm, I'm only slightly older than Reef. Well. I, fairly older but you know I felt a kind of fatherly uh, need to protect Reef and he said I'm getting a tattoo and I was like in such a conflict about what should I encourage him should I not encourage him you know <laughs> and, and, I mean the worst thing would be if if Reef said today I really regret getting that tattoo <laughs> I wouldn't wear that responsibility <laughs> but it, it all turned out well uh, speaking of which um you know you guys have actually been um you know, fairly busy since the film. I know, Reef, you've done a lot of TV shows, and I think you're on one right now. You want to just let let our audience know what what you've been up to in the past five years? Yeah, yeah. So while we were, um, I think we were in Los Angeles at the time. Um, I had auditioned for a TV series in New Zealand called West Side, which was a prequel to a really famous um, and really successful series called Outrageous Fortune that ran for six years. Um, and I was to play one of the younger characters on that. And uh, I actually remember, where, it was the like Hollywood Walk. What is that walk called when you go up the, the mountains and you can see the big Hollywood sign? And I had a missed call from my agent and um, I was like, oh, I think, I think that she's calling me about this role. And so we ran back down because I had no reception and sure enough that they'd said that they wanted to put an offer and I, that was really, really exciting. And then that kind of led on to the next five years of my life, which was working on this show. I've been going back to New Zealand uh, for four months every year to to shoot it. Um, but we just wrapped that up. That just wrapped up um, in September. I flew back from New Zealand and we finished our sixth season. And it's just been such a journey that is just a huge chapter of my life now. Um, and it's been really incredible. And my character in that is very different to, to James. <laughs> Very, very different. But still a criminal. Different kind of criminal, though. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. It's, fun. it's always fun to play the criminal on occasion. And then, right. Grant, I think you have your new thing here is uh, Wicked Women. Is that? Yeah. Um, Wicked Women is uh, one one project on, on the slate at the moment. So um, since Downriver, I mean, I mean, my real focus has been uh, on another feature. 
and features are just so difficult to get financed. But um, we've got a number of scripts that have uh, been, you know, developed. So I've, I've, I've done a lot of writing and hopefully one of them will get the green light, however that happens. Um, and in the, in the meantime, I've been looking at series and I did some episodes of um, uh, web series and then Wicked Women is a story um, about two uh, lesbians from Sydney, a true, true story about two lesbians in Sydney in the early 90s who started the BDSM scene of Sydney um, with parties and magazines and it's a really naughty show. Um, I'm learning a lot. And um, I'm just, I love working with the team. It's an awesome team of uh, lesbian writers, trans writers, and, and me. And then, um, yeah, so so that hopefully is, is going to happen. Um, and then my other foray over the last few years is into virtual reality. Um, so I, I did a pilot of um, like the first episode of a series of a kid's show in virtual reality called 300 Minutes of Danger. And... Um, We've now developed the other nine episodes and we're about to go to scripts on those. And then, of course, dependent on green light, um, hopefully next year we might be shooting hopefully all 10, if not some, but um, in virtual reality. So that's that's amazing for from a directing point of view is to, is to shoot in 360. I had to unlearn so much stuff and um, just try to reapply things. So yeah, it's a real it's a mixed bag of, of projects. For me at the moment it's quite fun out of curiosity why 300 minutes like why <laughs> why not 360 minutes <laughs> why <laughs> it's um it's based on a book which is called 300 minutes and they're 10 stories and each one is told um like a real time 30 minutes oh, so okay. it, adds up. it adds up if you do your maths i got it i got it no oh, perfect well guys, um, you know, thank you very much for taking the time for our audience. Um, both Reef and Grant are in, in Australia. So, so they're actually talking to us from, from the future. So yeah, it's actually their Thursday, my Wednesday. Uh, and whatever day you see that just add a day to whatever it is. And that's, that's where it that's is. Really but um, <laughs> we're gonna end with, I'm gonna show the trailer for Down River. And, and again, guys, thank you for taking the time and being here with us. I know, you know, we obviously love the film. We brought it back and I'm sure the, the, the audience that rediscovered this film or discovered it for the first time definitely enjoyed it as well. And uh, thank you uh, so much. Victor, I just, I just wanna thank you yeah. and everybody at the festival. Um, we had the most amazing experience when we, when we were in Miami. I mean, I look back at it as one of the best weekends of my life. And, yeah, we did do a long, a long plane trip to get there, but every second on the ground was just so joyous. And seeing those photos that you brought up just, <laughs> just shows you know, we're just like our faces beaming. We yeah. just uh, we loved it so much. So thank you and thanks for supporting the film, Three Screenings. Yeah, and Very then I... I do remember from that very long flight that um, you handle it better than Reef. <laughs> Reef was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was, yeah. I mean, caffeine certainly helps. Caffeine and then at a certain point, alcohol, which gets really confusing <laughs> when you're in a different time zone. <laughs> but, uh, you know, those are the, that'll, that'll keep you going. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to run the trailer right now. Where is he? Did you weigh him down? Did you push him out? He's killing me. I can't keep looking until I find him. every 24 hours for a month, and then every 72 after that. Zero tolerance. So you killed that kid, huh? I don't know if I should say. Will I help her? He hasn't come back for you. He just needs to put some things at rest. Do you think that finding him is going to make you free? Is a 